Chris Promacio is the CEO of International Surf Therapy Organization. Her mission and theirs is to help organizations around the world offer therapy to people whose conditions can include physical ailments, autism, post-traumatic stress, depression, or other mental illnesses, and help them make a connection with the natural world and perhaps more importantly within themselves through the organized and structured approach to surfing. Combining the therapeutic elements of the ocean with the adventure and personal challenge of surfing creates an environment where a person can individually awaken something characteristically human and cleansing and revelatory. We've had a very special group of dedicated surfers on this show who we love and admire very much. Duke Harbin, Artemis Prime, Laird Hamilton, and now our very special guest today, Chris Promacio. Lions Rock Productions. This is Jay Moore. This is Greg Cruz. This is Bryce Vine. This is Dexter from The Offspring. This is Nathan This is Sebastian Younger. This is Daryl This is Stuart Copeland. This is Mitchell Lepp. This is Andy Summers. This is Dr. Bob Greenberg. This is Gabby Reese. This is Rob Bell. Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Hey, and this is Pete A. Turner. This is Chris Promacio, CEO of International Surf Therapy Organization, and we are catching waves with Break It Down. And now, the Break It Down Show with John Leon Guerrero and Pete A. Turner. Yeah, we're sitting here on the beach at Camp Pendleton. I'm looking at best-selling author of Echo and Ramadi, Scott Husing, who set this up. He is the official producer of this episode, and uh, he's. A, but of course, because you're a producer, you got to sit in the sand. <laughs> Every yeah, I'm the low man on the. the that is a low dirty job. Is I do more pods with Pete. I get more monikers, and honorifics. No, I'm, yeah. But lower accommodations. You yeah, know, it's like know. let's 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 make sure the talent has the chair. <laughs> 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 okay, I already love these two gentlemen. Thank you for having me today. Yeah, thank you for being on. Yeah, we were literally looking at the waves. Uh, in my olden times, I probably could throw a rock and hit that water. Now I would throw a rock and hit my foot and scream and then have to carry the rock to the water. <laughs> and then we'd need the lifeguards yeah. to come and carry and drive you up. Oh, yeah. You're assuming I could get to the water, too. I probably would yeah, be. Yeah, like, I thought that was cool, like setting this up. We're on the beach. Chris yeah. is teed up at here at Camp Pendleton to support another organization she was involved with. the uh, Program manager for the Jimmy Miller Memorial Foundation. Foundation as well. Yeah. Wow. So we're going to meet up with Wounded Warrior Battalion today, our active duty military, rehabilitating them right back to civilianhood. Is that a term? That's not a term. Yeah. It but- can be. <laughs> if you're a civilian, you can make up anything you want. Yeah, that's true. But actually, once a, once a military personnel, always military personnel, right? One, is- once a Marine, always a Marine is how the bumper once stickers a Marine, read. For sure, always yeah. a mm-hmm. That's how the bumper stickers read it. That's true. Well, I have to say, at Jimmy Miller Memorial Foundation, as well as International Surf Therapy Org, where we cover many, many populations from at risk youth to children on the autism spectrum to our veterans and active duty military. And, and far beyond that, we are working with incarcerated men and women who are just getting out of jail and we are picking them up and taking them surfing. We do not discriminate. So, thus, we do not only work with our Marines, but we love our Marines. Um, we are proud to say we work with every branch of the military. Yeah, but I yes. think that's cool that, well, that's obviously how we were connected through a, a Marine who comes down and volunteers and supports and participates in this program, former commanding officer of Wounded Warrior Battalion West, Steve, Stephen Mount, Stephen call Mount, sign who will be Slayer, here? who I, she, Chris is like, you know Stephen? I'm like, who's Stephen? <laughs> and I said, you mean Slade? Oh, Slate. Yeah, no one calls him Steven. But I've never but we call him Steve. heard Slate before. I know. It's his call sign. So then I had to explain what a call sign is, not a nickname, and there's a differentiation. But I thought it was cool, too, when I was invited down and understood that it's not just veterans, although the base hosts it for this program. They also extend out to people with all sorts of addiction, trauma. Mm-hmm. Uh, Suicidal thoughts. Anxiety. And so, depression is big. So how long have you been doing that and just in a ballpark number, like how many people have you helped? Well, gosh, I mean, through the Jimmy Miller Foundation, we're at close to a thousand and we refer to all of our participants as athletes. So at a, about a thousand athletes a year, and that's just our program. What's so beautiful about International Surf Therapy Organization is we've brought at this point, we are 12 months new. We are speaking and working with over 30 surf therapy programs from the Philippines to 
Puerto Rico, Panama, Portugal, Spain, obviously I'm all over athlete. the United States. So it's like a big I in international. It's not just like, oh, we hang out in California and we think we're doing this, but no, there's really feelers out there. This oh, is massive. And everybody is capturing the healing powers of the ocean and, you know, honestly, they are using surfing as an alternative to traditional therapy. We call it surf therapy. Do you know Kyle Bucket? I do. Okay. I'm very close friends with him. One More Wave, uh, incredible organization, which of course, one beautiful thing that Kyle and his team are doing is they're creating sustainability by getting equipment to our veterans. So they are making custom, beautiful surfboards. They're also doing custom which you wetsuits. Sit on, wow. By the way. Which you can you cannot <laughs> Somebody only learned in the this water. morning do not sit on surfboards. It was like being chastised by this like <laughs> what do you call what you refer to yourself? legal legal No, legal. Short, short person. We do not say that on air. Um <laughs> so Kyle is part of we don't say it on air. International Surf Therapy Oregon. Oh, okay. well, one more wait. Sorry, I should give props to their organization. But I do love their they're very different where they absolutely take their veterans out surfing. The creating sustainability by getting them equipment, that's probably one of our biggest challenges with our military personnel. It's transportation to the beach, and then it's equipment. Who They don't own surfboards. They don't own wetsuits. And we live in California, and yeah, everyone's like, it's sunny. But we live on the cold side of the Pacific Ocean. We're not Hawaii side of the Pacific Ocean. It's chilly. So we need full wetsuits. So, yeah, it's one more way rock what about uh stand up is that a, a paddle boarding is that also part of this whole thing too because not everybody can jump up on a board anymore well you know we work with a lot of amputees and uh-huh. i mean here's the thing my culture my tradition i'm hawaiian filipino yeah however you ride the energy of that wave into the shore you've surfed it it yeah. can be on your belly it can be on your bum it can be without a board right so we call that surfing okay i think stand up paddle boarding has sort of its own little world but in surf therapy it's we use surfboards okay and you know not discriminating because we also believe that being in and around near on or underwater makes us happier and healthier and that's science you know but that actually has been proven right. on a molecular level our cells change when right we're near water science water. science well we do have somebody who's earning a phd in surf therapy which has never been done before that doesn't exist this is the first time ever in scotland of all places hmm. And so pretty soon it is going to be science, right? Surf therapy is going to be proven. It's going to be, he's going to be a surf doctor, legit surf doctor. Doctor surf. Did you know that it was even a thing? It's a thing. It's going to I be don't a- think most people know it's a thing. But what was cool too is Pete was talking about the different equipment and therapy's therapy. And I think if you're connected to the water, which is really the most unifying thing is is the ocean 100%. and it doesn't matter what type of equipment and that was cool when i was talking to some you know i was up in manhattan beach for the event uh last week to try it's, this is like the most research i think i've done for a pod that we've laid down but it yeah. was cool because these were all veterans and for every one veteran there was like three people supporting each veteran in the water a person on the beach a person behind them on the board but they don't everybody i talked to they didn't discriminate about oh you're boogie boarding this and they asked me oh so you're a surfer i'm like no i'm not a surfer and i told them i used to be stationed at camp pendleton and trestles and i'd go boogie board and none of them looked down their nose at me like oh boogie boarder they're like no that's totally cool and and the fact that they're not discriminating against how you get in the water how you stay connected there was one well there were a couple great quotes from that meeting alone that chris was leading this whole discussion too was that uh she asked one of the veterans after the fact so would you come back would you surf again and he didn't even hesitate he goes i'd absolutely surf again and that was that was important to me and another great comment and you can elaborate on this because i thought it was powerful was that once you're in the water it really slows down your mind how important is that slowing down your mind just shutting off you talk about the phone and technology talk about Oh my gosh. I mean, so some people think surfing is, you know, just for fun. And by the way, it is fun. And some people think surfers are a bunch of adults or kids and adults who never wanted to grow up. And by the way, I hope I'm always growing up, but it is so much more than that. It is, it is therapy on every level, mental, emotional, physical, right? Because obviously there's a physical element. We're paddling and we're getting through the waves and then we're standing up and we're catching waves. 
the mental and emotional, you go in there and the ocean forces you to slow down, which is ironic because you're sort of, you, you, your adrenaline is pumping as you're trying to get out into the lineup because you're getting slammed by waves. So we call that, you know, you don't want to be in the, <laughs> you don't want to be where the waves are slamming you. It's, it's no fun there. You want to get out of that zone and get out into the lineup where it's calm. And how the ocean forces us to slow down is guess what? It's going to deliver waves when it wants to deliver waves, much like life, right? Where we have to accept what's dealt. It's not about control. You have to give it all up. You have to let go. And whatever comes to you is what comes to you and in the manner at which it comes to you. So it's not maybe always the shape you want or the size you want, but you have to slow down out there on a, you know, maybe I guess science, if we want to go there or biology, literally our heart rate slows down. Our blood pressure is reduced. So it's, yeah, you go out there and you're able to just kind of sit and relax once you get into the lineup. We call, a lot of people call it their Zen. Some people call it their church. And it's, it allows you to just go out and be in this massive, right, nature. So getting back to nature and flow, we all know that that is therapeutic and there's so many therapeutic benefits from being in nature, but there's something really unique and special about being in the ocean. It's massive. I mean, it is massive, unlike anything else, and it will humble you. It will scare you. But the one thing that's beautiful about our military personnel that I, it's been said a lot, whether it's active duty or veterans, they love the adrenaline rush. It's a feeling that they hadn't actually felt in a really long time in a ironically safe way. So can we keep everybody safe? Number one, absolutely. We have to keep them safe, which is to your, to your point, Scott, there's it, usually it was, two to three per. It athlete. was absolutely at the forefront of the program. It was structured. Everybody had a different color t-shirt and Chris is out there. She needs no megaphone on the beach. <laughs> I mean, obviously the the <laughs> loudest tiny person I've met, and she's barking or she's like, "All right, first thing, safety first, but have fun." So have fun. That's first. I'm like, "Well, what is it? Safety or fun?" Like she's like, "Safety, definitely. We have to say it has to well, safe. we and say it, safety, it was. but there has to be like I feel like they walk hand in hand. They walk they together because we do want them to be safe. I mean, it's the ocean. Again, we don't control the ocean. Except so. for the Marine Corps. There's no fun. It's all safety. So you go to the yeah. range. Yeah, it's totally you true. You make shooting and blowing stuff up unfun. It's right. all about safety. But you the, the military will ruin a parade. <laughs> they will ruin going shooting. <laughs> They'll ruin a picnic. Especially for the people in it. Yeah, no, totally. Aww. Nothing yeah. worse You're than being in that. like a large unit run. You're like, this sucks. <laughs> it sucks so bad. I think- I, I like that. to. It's how you say it. Like you, get, like the military, army, especially is like. There's always time for safety, and then you can go, <laughs> yeah, or you could say, you know, there's always time for safety. Yeah, <laughs> so it just depends on how you look at it. Yeah. You got to balance it. Like a, the, there's a general in in Iraq, and his, his responsibility was force protection. It's the number one priority. It's like, let's just all go to Fort Riley, Kansas, middle of the nation. Nothing's gonna hurt us. It's all good. It's never about the mission. So there's always time. They're for not safety. surfing in Fort Riley, but. It was cool, too. I ask you this question. We're on the phone, and the <laughs> doctor who's creating this validation for surfing, yeah. he lives in Scotland. They're not surfing. Scotland. They need, like, 10-millimeter wetsuits or no, dry suits. They're, they're, he's, like wearing a, he's, well, a, he's wearing 5'4 with a hood and <laughs> booties and gloves. So, yeah, they surf in the snow, and it's freezing cold. But I think that's what's so beautiful about it. This idea that surf therapy can be anywhere, and when you think about Scotland, who's thinking about surfing in Scotland? It's as cold as you imagine it to be. And yeah, of course, there's surfers there. there and there's are no sun. He's there. the whitest oh, guy too. He like he stepped out in the sun. He's like, ah, I'm burning alive. Yeah. And it was it's October in Southern California, but he's from Scotland. It's in his DNA. Yeah. But I thought that was neat. Um, and so if you're in Fort Riley, Kansas, and there's no place to surf, I ask you that question. So what about the guys that are landlocked that live in the Fort Riley's of the world or Illinois or Nebraska? How do they surf? How do they benefit? Well, this is this is an interesting question because I think that this is how and why the wave pools will become essential. And Kyle, Bucket, what's a wave one pool? more wave I'll, is a big fan of this. Wave pools, man-made wave pools that you can surf that are rideable. I would say arguably the most famous one today right now is Kelly Slater's wave pool in Lemoore, California. 
now owned by WSL, which is the World Surf League, right? But Kelly Slater developed that with a team and it was a labor of love and you can go up there. They can change the bottom of this wave pool, which maybe we should give some of our listeners or some of your listeners hours. Yeah, you now take they belong it over? to me. Yeah. Some of Get your on the li- sand. Yeah, some of your listeners' ideas. Obviously, waves break based on the bottom of the ocean, whether it's a reef break, which is rocks and coral and whatnot, and then a uh, sand beach break, which is all sand, and based on the tides and based on the swell and based on the direction of the wind. So all these things matter and all these things manipulate and literally shape our waves. Well, the wave pool is... A button so they push the different buttons and they move and change the bottom of the yeah. wave pool and then that changes the face of the wave so, so how, they can make how longer big barrels. is this thing and like how many people could you get in it like best case well I, so there's wave pools wave pools are becoming sort of a thing and I, there's some people who are sort of against the idea of wave pools but in my world we're talking about mental health and mental wellness and if we can get people to surf waves that are landlocked then wave pools have now become, as far as I'm concerned, a health and wellness care center. What about those places oh, where there's like a perpetual break? Like in, it's crazy, but in the middle of Munich in Germany, oh, right. you can surf all day long. It, it's not, you don't get the big ocean feel, but you can jump on a face and you can surf that thing for as long, you know, 30 seconds, 20 seconds, however long you can stand yeah. it. Yeah, some of those river mouths. Yeah, and some, yeah. Some people down in Texas, they ride the the freight liners, Mm -hmm. the big monster, you know, freight liners come through and create these waves and they go ride them for miles, miles. miles. The the care center thing is intriguing to me because a lot Mm -hmm. of people just like as we progress and improve on other forms of pharmaceuticals or like legalizing marijuana here in California and other places, which it's illegal on base, by the way, uh, to think of a wave pool as a therapy center is is makes perfect sense because who would have thought we'd be doing that at the YMCA or water therapy for people in physical therapy programs across the world. So I think that's probably what we should talk about too, because this is important. Your, your means to an end is ultimately from what I gathered talking to um, Jamie, Jamie and you over the, over the last, you know, several weeks is you want to get it to a place where blue cross blue shield TRICARE, everybody pays for this. And it's a legitimate form of, therapy the big, a big t just like psychotherapy or physical therapy and occupational therapy uh, rec, yes rec, rec therapy so how do you validate that how do you say like this isn't just screwing off at the beach like we are literally quantifying the results and mm-hmm. how do you in, in layman's terms how do you quantify that how do you say they're going to get this out of this well to our friends and family we bring them down to the beach because i think as soon as you see it and experience it especially let me just point out when you when you see surf therapy with specifically children on the autism spectrum, even if they're nonverbal, they're verbal. They become verbal. You will see their faces light up, their smiles. They are so engaged and they are so happy and ironically calmer. It calms them down, which is massive for the parents, right? But how do we quantify or qualify it? through data. So in order to get our healthcare practitioners to prescribe surf therapy as a standard form of care, which is ISTO's vision, ISTO's vision also being insurances recognize it and cover it, right, is through data. Every organization that is currently contributing to the International Surf Therapy Org or ISTO, I'll call it ISTO going forward, they have to be collecting data. We are contributing and collaborating together to share the story and we know that they need numbers and figures and, and, and data that is showing the positive therapeutic benefits of surfing. It's, it's more than, could we just bring everybody down? Can I bring my policy change right. lawmakers, my assemblymen, my councilmen down to the beach? Uh, sure. But we have to be able to show them. There's still a bureaucratic, bureaucratic requirement. Changing policy. Well, you know what's crazy, too, is because, like, I have suicidal ideation all the time, like all the time. And I have my ways of dealing with it, and hopefully they continue to work. But I have also had Come four. Come surf with us. <laughs> I'll try. I have had four different, at my local level, VA therapists in the last six months. Like, they can't keep me with the same person. And oftentimes I show up, and they haven't even read my file. Like, you, you have insomnia. Nope. 
what drugs are you on? None right now. You know, it's like, did you read my file before I came down? Now I'm just mad. Now I should just leave. And really, that's my new tactic now is I just leave because it gets me aggravated. And I don't need a budget changing like a, a billet for someone to impact my well-being because it really does. You know, I haven't been to the big VA in months because of the last time the guy just riled me up so much. I literally don't go care for my entire person because going there now like aggravates me. You know, literally. So hopefully you guys can figure this out so that I can have a reliable, you know, because it can be group therapy. It can be me just taking care of myself. And it can also be, you know, guided by somebody. Let me chime in and then you respond to this because this was something I found interesting too. Whether it was the veterans that were treating up in Manhattan Beach, these athletes that Chris calls them all athletes. Like there's no labels. It's not, oh, you're Sergeant Flip Flop and this is Corporal Beach Ball. Or you're a child from at risk abuse. Yeah, or I'm I'm addict so-and-so. There's no labels. And at either event that I've been to, and this is my third here, uh, none of that is brought in. The bags are all checked at the door and they're Mm -hmm. solely focused on surfing. There's no war stories being told. There's no, I was with this unit and this, you know, glad handing and yeah. do this it's all about being here in the moment and i don't know how you cage them mentally to like this is it maybe it's because of the ocean like this thing can suck you in man you need to be right here right now and listen to i'm so glad you said that i was to to actually respond to both of you at the same time nice i think what's so beautiful about these programs these surf therapy programs is the truth is there's not one person in the circle who feels like it's therapy. And a lot of our veterans, and it's safe to say this through experience, they don't want more therapy. That's all they get is therapy. And, they, and it feels very rigid. And they're in, they're in a room with four walls and a roof, right? And actually, one of our veterans, you know, they talk about how sometimes they're talking to the back of a computer because their therapist, I'm using air quotes for our listeners, um, is behind the computer typing while he's supposed to be connecting and talking. Air quotes. That's not, no, I'm, I'm waving. Hi, Donnie. Um, airwaves. But they, they feel like they're not being heard. We want to feel across the board. This so is, if it's not called therapy or they don't want to be therapized and they come into the session, what do you call it? Well, just being no, connected. No, we, do, or... we do call it surf therapy. We, you know, we do say that, but, or ocean therapy. Some people say ocean therapy, but we, everybody wants to feel seen, heard and valued. And there's a way to do it without anybody feeling like I'm sitting through therapy, so to speak. I say this at every session. We let the ocean and surfing do its magic. And we try to get out of the way of that. We keep them safe, but we try to get out of the way of that. There's something extremely therapeutic about just being right near water. So we're already sort of creating this environment. And then we, our program specifically, and many of the programs do something around something like this. But we, we do this, what we refer to as a kumbaya circle, where everybody speaks, including our volunteers. And I'll tell you, the people who come up to me the most to talk about how therapeutic it felt are the volunteers. Every session, my volunteers, our volunteers will come up and say, I feel like I had therapy today. And I'm like, yes, we know that we're impacting everybody on the beach and everybody talks during the Kumbaya circle. That's really important. At the end, after we eat, we break bread together because there is nothing more traditional than breaking bread and having conversation, right? My question on Saturday was, who would you invite to your Thanksgiving table? If and family aside, right? Family's already there. Just assume all the family members you love in life are there. Who would you invite to your Thanksgiving table? Because the idea is that we all eat and have conversations, and that's intimacy. And so we do this on the beach. And the other thing is that the first time you've done that. What? Ask that question. I ask different questions every session. So we have 50 sessions a year and I have to come up with different questions every session. And so every session is a different question. And, and what was beautiful about having Jamie in town, Jamie earning a PhD in surf therapy had chosen Jimmy Miller foundation as his first organization to go work with. He's also going to Liberia and then later he'll move on to Australia working with different orgs, waves for change in Liberia and then waves of wellness in Australia. But he said, wow, we're eating pizza on the beach. Guess what you can't do in Scotland? <laughs> so he works with our have work. Good food. <clears throat> yeah, you can well, have Colin Skink on the beach, though. No, 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 no. Just sitting on the Agus beach. on the beach. It's Agus. not warm enough. It's not warm enough. 
they can't sit on the beach and have these warm yeah, sessions. The North Atlantic's it's pretty cool. It's freezing, right. Yeah. So he works with Wave, or he used to work with Wave Project UK, and they couldn't have this kumbaya circle of eating and hanging out and talking. They go surf and they get out and try to get warm as soon as possible. The kumbaya circle at the end of the session is really just our athletes talking about their surf session because I am a, I'm going to just admit it, I'm an avid surfer. I surf every single day, but I'm also a kook and probably always will be. I kook for those listeners is sort of a beginning surfer sort of. Yeah. It's a beginning surfer is what it is. Um, but you told me you've done it for eight years. Seven so years. when do you lose your <laughs> seven novice years. status? Seven? No, I, I, I always want to be a kook because kook then there's status. no expectations of nice. how I surf. I'm nah. always going to be a kook because I will just say I'm a kook and then no expectations. It's like the kid that never gets promoted here on base. Like uh, he's the best rifleman yeah, ever. Nobody, but you no don't one expects much more. Right? Either, nobody yeah. expects anything. Yeah, he'll never be platoon sergeant, but. Yeah, so totally. let's talk about <laughs> Jamie's work a little bit because um, you hosted him <laughs> couch surfing uh, at, around the greater Southern California beach. Uh, Manhattan Beach. Manhattan yeah. Beach, yeah. Yeah, he couch surfed for two months. Yeah. So that's how dedicated this guy is. He's just like camping Damn. out, collecting data. So you and I had a conversation once, and you used words like structured uh, about the research. And <sighs> mm-hmm. and I said, and, and surfing. You, you said structured and surfing in the same mm-hmm. sentence. And I was... I said something pithy, like, you know, how can you use those two words in the same sentence when you're talking about your research and surf therapy when they're so incongruent? And, you know, I would think that some of the surfing legends would, you know, kind of roll over in their graves if they heard that, like, no, it's got to be fluid. It can't be structured. But you have to have a metric of success Mm -hmm. for applying the therapy with the result and then how you reapply that every single time. So that's a challenge. You just answered it. No, that's, that's exactly what it is. When I say structured, so we, so we sort of identify surf therapy as a structured, creating a structured means of surfing and to achieve a therapeutic benefit. So what we mean by structured is honestly, it's what's happening on land. We've got all these volunteers that show up. We've got water safety. We have beach safety. We'll have lunch. We have all these people in place, surf instructors. I have a safety coordinator person. That's the structure. But what I loved about that is you're right. Where's the structure once we get in the ocean? We can't control that. There is no structure in the ocean. And nobody likes to be told what to do and how to heal. It's got to be individual. And I think there's, I mean, because once you get out there, just look at the waves crashing. There's literally trillions and trillions of variables that can affect each person's therapy session, once they get on that board or once they're floating or bobbing around in the water in this tiny, small speck in this big blue ocean, how do you factor all that in? Sometimes there's triggers that happen. Very often there's triggers, especially with our active duty military, our wounded warrior battalion. There's a lot of triggers that happen out there. And you know, we're really cognizant of paying attention to them and, and their bodies. And if it's time to get out of the ocean, we'll sit. We'll just sit at the water's edge and just let them. Sometimes they want to talk. Sometimes they don't. Um, we do have a clinical director who joins us, particularly with, with Jimmy Miller Foundation. We do have research directors and, of course, myself. My background is psychology. So I think we're really in tune with those around us. The, the, there's many, many gifts surfing gave us, but I would say, or gives all of us, but I'd say one of the ones that many of us are most proud of is being present, being in the moment and taking that presence back to any situation. For example, on Saturday, my athlete, my veteran who I was out, we boogie board the back of the surfboard and that again, creates a little bit of structure. It's like surf training wheels. It was pretty cool. It is. Yeah. And it's yeah. because we only have a few seconds, right, surfing, We meaning there's only a few moments where they're standing up on a board and riding it to shore. So we we know in an hour and a half span, it's we might not necessarily, and, and, and it does happen, but we might not necessarily have created a surfer. But what we want to do is create a stable, structured, safe place where they're actually getting up on the board and standing and riding it. So we boogie board the back of the board, which means we're hanging on to the back of the board. My girl was having a bit of PTS. And by the way, I say PTS now because of your book. Just saying. 
I used to say PTSD, but ever since I read <laughs> your beautiful book, uh, PTSD, she was having a moment and she just wanted to cry. And so I took her away. I moved, I removed her from all of the, you know, organized chaos. That's what it is. There were 45 volunteers that day. There were 15 veterans in the water. I moved her completely away from that. And we just floated on the board together. I had a long nine and a half foot board. She's tiny. I'm tiny. So we were both on the ends of the boards just talking. I just let her cry and I let her talk. And I didn't, I, we say this a lot. We meet them where they are. So whatever they want to do, maybe it's just a day of floating in the ocean doesn't have to be riding a wave. It can just be floating in the ocean. So, I, I, you know, we prep our volunteers. We let them know, hey, we might see this today. There might be a massive trigger out here. There might be something really horrible that happens. The other, the other, I'm sorry, the other privilege we have is working in Manhattan Beach and working down here at Del Mar Jetty on Camp Pendleton Base. How, what a privilege is we have lifeguards. So unlike organizations across the globe, maybe in Liberia, maybe in South Africa, Cape Town, they are also opening up a program in Somalia. Not so many lifeguards. So talk about challenges, right? We have the privilege and honor of having these, you know, licensed guys who their job is to save people in the ocean. But our safety coordinator is not just trained, but certified. A lot of our volunteers are all watermen and waterwomen, and they've spent hours, thousands of hours in the ocean surfing themselves and can read. So we are very cognizant of rip currents, you know, where's it going north to south? Where are the currents? How far are they taking you out? Um, so that's the structure. The structure is keeping everybody safe and, you know, achieving a therapeutic benefit that happens. That's the magic. Well, people are thinking about this and they want to understand where they can go learn about this. Let's, let's yeah. set them back to where they can go and learn about what you guys do with the different organizations, whether we're talking about the, the Jimmy Miller Foundation. Uh, so let's talk about that so people can go and reference that. And then, and then tell us how people can, because we have a pretty strong charity vibe with the show. So where, can, where, where people should invest, you know, invest their charitable dollars. I think what's so great, so internationalsurftherapy.org or, and, and actually our, you know, www. Does anybody even say that anymore? I got no. scolded on that. I don't yeah, know I don't what you're talking about. Say, exactly. Who says that anymore? But it, there still is www. You know, some people don't even know what that stands for. I mean, duh, well, why, what? But people don't actually know that. The, our, our young people, like, what's www? I'm like, oh, goodness. Anyway, it's I N T L. So that's their international and then surftherapy.org. Our name is International Surf Therapy Organization, right? So we were able to use the .org as part of. This episode of the Break It Down show is brought to you by Lions Rock Productions. That's us. We publish, evaluate, and develop podcasts just like this one, consult others to build their own, and create associated content and content marketing strategies. So if you're launching or expanding your social media presence, your business, or your personal brand, or if you just want to take your media presence to the next level, reach out to us on Twitter at PDA Turner or at John LG69 at the Break It Down show. There's a thousand ways to get a hold of us. Now enjoy the show. So that's their international and then surftherapy.org. Our name is International Surf Therapy Organization, right? So we were able to use the .org as part of our... And we'll put that in the show notes too so people can so click. So what's so beautiful about International Surf Therapy Organization is whatever your calling is, is it children on the autism spectrum? Do you want to support our veterans? Do you want to support our at-risk youth who have been taken out of their homes due to abuse, drug, alcohol, emotional, physical, sexual abuse? Do you want to help our incarcerated men and women? Do you want to help, you know, um, our, how about our disabled veterans or just even we call it adaptive surfing because they've lost a leg They've lost two legs. They've lost an arm. They've lost two arms. Adaptive surfing, there are programs like Life Rolls On and uh, Amped Surf that work specifically with paraplegics, quadriplegics. If you go in and support International Surf Therapy Org, you have covered every population out there. That's, I think, what's really beautiful. You don't even have to. It's not specific. It's suicidal. It's at, at addicts, right? It's recovering addicts. It's even those who are dealing with cancer. We work with a program called Walk with Sally. 
they are a mentor mentee program that the mentors have all dealt with cancer in their lives and or had cancer themselves and the mentees are children who's going through either cancer themselves or or have lost a parent to cancer I mean, what's, what's your, you know, what is your thing? What do you want to give money to? Giving money to International Surf Therapy Org is supporting, not so new. I mean, some people have not, maybe never heard of surf therapy. I'm going to go back to the traditions of, of my ancestors. I'm Hawaiian Filipino. We've been riding waves since the beginning of time. Did we put, you know, any kind of data on it and call it therapy? No. But I bet they were feeling it. I bet on a molecular level, their cells were changing by riding waves. They didn't define it. And that's okay. Today, we're defining it so that we can change policy, so that we can have healthcare practitioners right prescribe it. But, And we know that that's necessary. But what I love about International Surf Therapy Org is we're literally covering every population out there. And that's kind of a beautiful idea is you don't really have to choose any one population to give your money to. It, it, it's got to feel too like a big responsibility when you cast your net that wide because I love it that I'm invited down to the veteran ones because that's my tribe. I mean, it's a big tribe and it's important to me, but to think about covering all those different groups who are suffering some sort of trauma or addiction, I think that you know that that's pretty important and yeah. i put chris on the spot too last week when i said well why do you do surf therapy why do you do ocean therapy and her i'll give her i'll give you the answer but then i'll see if she's got a different answer today but she said because everyone needs therapy does that say your answer that's what drew you into it why you were like i gotta surf i, I want to be a crazy kook yeah i mean I think everybody needs to find their tribe. I'm going to just use your words. Your people. Steal them. Nothing's original. Uh, right. Me. No, yeah. right. But He there, stole it anyhow. Absolutely. There's a beautiful. <laughs> Sebastian. Again. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Makes them. <laughs> Gets them mentioned. There's a beautiful sense of community the minute you get on a surfboard. You, whether you're a kook or whether you've been out surfing for 50 years. What's above kook level <laughs> status just so we have reference? Like where's well, Kelly Slater, expert? Oh, yeah. Of course. He's a pro. Kook guru. He's a pro. Yeah, I mean, Lord Kelly, his nickname is the Goat. He's just a, he's just. A, some people refer to him as an alien because they don't get it. Uh oh, a little bit of tides coming in. Um, yeah. So there's beginner, intermediate, and then pro or expert. And I'm, I'll always be a kook status. I hope I'm always a kook status. But I think you have this sense of community. You get out in the water. You don't know anybody's name name but you you all want the same thing we will all want to catch rides and we all want to you know we want the best barrel or you know the longest ride so you have that sense of community and belonging the moment you get in i love that the ocean is the great equalizer it doesn't care about the car you drive it doesn't care about how big your house is it doesn't care what college you went to or if you didn't go to college it certainly doesn't care how much money you have in the bank whether you're a man or a woman or what race you are, the color of your skin. You are all the same in the ocean. It is the great equalizer. It will treat you the exact same. It will humble you. It will scare you. And it will, it will wrap its, you know, beautiful waters around you like a hug. So So what, what scares you about this whole process about being the CEO of ISTO about getting in the water every time the unknown, what scares you? You know, I wrote an article not uh, right when I had started surfing about that, about I had gone out to the fear of sharks. is one thing. No, I don't have, I don't even a little bit have a fear of sharks because the more, you know, about sharks, they don't want us, you know, it, it's, it's not, you know, they don't want us. They're one of the greatest predators on earth. If they wanted us, we would die every single day. Matter of fact, I have had, again, the privilege of surfing with many, many sharks underneath my board. One time I went to duck dive and there was like a four foot shark in the wave. And I'm like, I think I'm gonna take this wave on the head. Uh, I'm gonna avoid that shark. Uh, I think that's another beautiful gift that the ocean gives us and keeps giving and continues to give is the marine life. I surf with dolphins. I surf with whales down in Cape Town. I was surfing with a whale right next to me up in Santa Cruz which is Northern California area, I have served right next to a sea otter who was cracking open a Dungeness crab like he was at a five-star restaurant. I have never (laughs) seen a more beautiful 
eloquent way of anything cracking open crab and eating crab with this little pete was at denny's this morning eating ham so i was I there's ham. like a ham of the sea there's yeah. a, well, there there's, ham of, there's that's a, their ham of the sea pete. Maybe, but <laughs> so but was, what scares so what scares you though is there anything about this whole taking on the responsibility of international Surf you know, is that scary? What, the water doesn't scare you. Water doesn't scare. You know, it's beautiful. International Surf Therapy Organization is not a surf therapy program. We are an umbrella. We are a collaboration and a collective of all of these beautiful, these thousands of beautiful people on earth who found surfing on their own right. They're veterans. They're recovering addicts. They are people who have had a child on the autism spectrum born with a, on aut autism spectrum and they have all discovered the therapeutic values of surfing so they have created their surf therapy programs around the globe we are all just sort of bringing them together to talk we're having conversations that all of us have been having for 10 20 30 40 years about surfing and the therapeutic benefits of it and so now we're having them together this is the first time ever it's never happened before where all the surf therapy programs are talking. We want to move the needle together. We want to ride what we refer to as the party wave. Well, there has to be standardization. And I think that's, Absolutely. I think that's important. That's something we understand as professional soldiers. And I think it's cool, too. I mean, there's some similarities. That's why I was so keenly interested in doing this interview, because, one, it affects my tribe. You know, and Sebastian, there he goes again. But he's like our Kevin Bacon, man. I don't know what it is. But you made a conscious choice in, like, what you call people by calling them athletes. And, you know, we're so embroiled in this whole PCism over the last 10, 20 years. You know, we can't call them hobos anymore. You, or we can't, and then you can't call them bums. You can't call them homeless now. What do they call? What do we call people who are, like, people who The less fortunate with who really hard beds. Homelessness. And I'm like, I, mm -hmm. you know, I'm no expert. I don't have a PhD uh, yeah. in anything, but uh, it's all the same thing. But you have to make a conscious choice of how you address people. And because just like the ocean, there has to be some standardization, some something common that those people connect with every time they go to this gathering here, or maybe it's in Portugal, or maybe it is in Australia, I would not want to surf Somalia. I've been to that country. Uh, I find no redeeming value in surfing there. But this good surf, I guess, and you're a surfer, that's where you got to go, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the commonality is the ocean. That's the thing that brings us together. Or actually, I guess I shouldn't say that because as I'm trying to plug wave pools to be some sort of health and wellness care center, uh, ultimately or eventually, because it's not there yet, um, water, water, we need water. Water is medicine you know, surfing is my prescription. And is there one drug that a child on, with the, on the autism spectrum or, or a man or woman struggling with addiction or PTS or traumatic brain injury, TBI, is there one drug that they could take? Absolutely not. It will not. But can we all get out in the water and feel some of the therapeutic benefits of it? Well, yeah. not only the person on the board, I want you to share this story too. It's also the people with the victim, just like any, every oh, soldier, yeah. there's four family members left behind. And you told a great story about a young kid who was, you know, dealing with severe autism, uh, you know, and his brother came out. Tell that story because that's really emblematic of some of the healing, not just within the veteran community, but well outside. Oh, yeah. I mean, we have to talk about the siblings and then we talk we have to talk about the spouses who stood by, you know, their side and, and are there in the trenches can I use those words? Yeah, I think so. Turn. In the trenches with... with no, push-ups now. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, the front leaning rest. Water kicks, Chris. So one of the really cool things about a walk on water, which is, a, which is an organization in California that works specifically with children with special needs. Children on the autism spectrum, Down syndrome, blind children. A lot of the siblings very often comment about how they can't do a lot of things because of their sibling with special needs. They cannot go to Disneyland. It is way too much stimuli. It's too loud. It's too much. It's, it's overactive and it's just, it's way too much. And they can't, they can't go out to eat. There are all these things that they can't do. Well, what's neat about a walk on water is they encourage and ask that when the families come down, that the sibling also learns how to surf alongside their sibling with special needs so that the siblings, brothers and sisters are riding waves together. So after one session at a walk on water, one of the siblings turned and said, you know, 
there's so many things I can't do because of my brother. But today I got to do something cool because of my brother. And they said it that way, right? All these things I don't get to do. And today I got to do something because of. So that's a really beautiful thing. I think another thing that actually happened here at Camp Pendleton, we had a husband and wife surf, first time ever. And together. I mean, not first time ever for us, but it was their tandem first time. Tandem surfing or board by board? Next, next to each other. Not tandem, but next to each other. Surfing. That's a thing I've seen. No, of course it it's a thing. Yeah, like you wear like, like the 50 style Speedo and you yes. lift your lady up. Yeah, we, no, did we're you bring not your Speedo there. today? Oh, I've always got a Speedo it's on. Speedo Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. That's Every day nice. Speedo Tuesday. Anyway, it's totally back to just this, made it so up. this husband and wife were surfing alongside each other. And we're sitting in the Kumbaya circle at the end. We, everybody's eaten and we're talking and chatting. And I come around to them and I say, so how did, how did it go today? How was surfing today? And the wife starts crying. And she says, I haven't seen my husband this happy and this peaceful since before we got married. And we got married 12 years ago. Mm. And I... I guess I should just, I'm a big fat baby. I cry about everything. So I sort of behind my dark glasses, I'm starting to well up and I'm thinking, wow, that's really powerful. And then the husband who's next to talk about his surfing turns to his wife and says to his wife, I'm sorry. And, and then he said, but I agree. I haven't felt this free since before I was married. And it has nothing to do with my beautiful wife and my beautiful children. I, something about the energy of the ocean. I just felt it today. I mean, come on. Yeah. Like, like, what? Are you kidding? That's, I mean, if that's not therapy, what's therapy? You know, and, and that's the biggest thing. International Surf Therapy Organization and all of these orgs that are taking arguably one of the coolest sports out there, which is surfing. I think it's one of the coolest. Okay, I'm biased. But it is one of the coolest things out there. They are changing the game of the negative stigma of mental health yeah stop talking about it being so negative i know in the military i mean back in the day right could you say you had pts and still have a job i don't know back in the day they didn't talk about it. they didn't talk about it well that's even worse i call that cancer and this is no joke one of the uh one of the therapeutic responses was to have you fill sandbags indefinitely until you got better scott knows about this kind of thing like let's make something completely repetitive and shitty so you're like i am cured i'm cured let oh. me go back to whatever it was wow. yeah i'm not even joking like that was an actual prescription for battle fatigue wow that's oh i learn. you learn something every day yeah. some things you don't want to learn <laughs> we 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 learn by our own mistakes and, and just like everything else so within the surf therapy organization too so you got one pasty scotsman conducting this study jamie marshall jamie marsh jamie what's up buddy um he's Hi, heading jamie. back over yeah there he's, he's in he's in he's in the air um, he's flying. oh yeah he's on his way back but uh so how do you get more jamies and then who validates the work is it surfers is it is it the recipients of the therapy is there like a dr zogs uh you know <laughs> dr. now Zog. now dr zog is weighing in because mm -hmm. he's not just known for sex wax anymore he's uh coming in and he's got a new title but that's so funny is that, you, that's probably your the only surf thing you even i learned like every surfing word they literally still use words like rad and stoked. Mm -hmm. bitching I'm stoked, so stoked bomber like we do the waves were punchy. I'm like, so what does this mean? What is this? I'm like, you know me. I'm a writer. So I'm Dude, like, that's all shore pound. I'm, I, yeah. I, I have no idea what I'm talking about. So that, that wave I'm not just playing, out. I'm not just right. playing coy. It's you know, loud. Craig was like, oh, that's adorable. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm like, no, I really don't. I have never surfed before. It's but a whole I've new hung language around for sure. some surfers. But who validates it? So how do you get this consortium of doctors guys who have phds and mds on the wall say you know what i totally want to buy into this or i totally want these kids in med school there's a new med program about uh surf therapy or ocean therapy mm -hmm. i think there's hydrotherapy everyone knows that like water pressing against the skin and the body and the muscles that is legit ice cold baths after an nfl football game mm -hmm. that works this this cold, cold. <laughs> it's yeah, cold. you don't want you want some <laughs> Free ice hydrotherapy right yeah. here. Come get the it's cold. crappy dot you Come buy. Come get in the, the Pacific soap. Ocean. Yeah, and do it totally without a wetsuit. Do it yeah. without a wetsuit. That's cold. That nice will be If you get in without a wetsuit, I 
will not get in with it. No, but that's an ice bath, right? That is, you know what? I love that question. And just God exactly. God damn it, you got me this time. Did I? I love that question. You oh, got okay. it. Well, here, let me answer it real quick. <laughs> the, I love that question because here's the truth. Surf therapy has been around for a very long time. We're actually not necessarily. How long? Well, I mean, 30 years, defined. 40. I mean, we're still defining it. So, but I just mean people have been taking children and adults out and to achieve a therapeutic benefit for okay. 20, 30, 25, 30 years. But to answer that, um, oh gosh, you got me off track. To, oh, to talk about that. We're sort of, uh, hopefully I don't get ridiculed for this. We're not necessarily reinventing the wheel because art therapy is recognized. Music therapy is recognized. Equine therapy is recognized. You can go to school to study all that. You can, so you can get degrees and you can get much of that massage therapy is recognized. You can get that insured. All of that can be insured now. So are we reinventing the wheel? No, we are just we're putting another thing in under and right now it's falling under experiential therapy which is another thing you can check on your claims to get insured experiential therapy and that's what surf therapy is falling under right now which is isto's vision and mission is that the words surf therapy are recognized in the same manner as occupational therapy rec therapy yeah so we're working on that so 10 years, you think it'll be there? No. 20 years? No way. Five. Less than five. Five years. Less than That's five years. That's ambitious. Less than five years. We already have somebody earning a PhD in surf therapy. I, I, was, I was thinking to get to university level, that's going to take five to 10 years. You know, but we have people talking about writing the curriculum. So occupational therapy hasn't been around since the beginning of time. Right. Rec therapy hasn't been around since the beginning of time. So those have all come through and now they are... I mean, I think, widely it's, studied. I think it's interesting how you'll have to leverage technology in a world that's sure. so devoid of technology to really get you where you want to be, you know, cool like, comparison. Like, yeah. Yeah. So there's all these, all of these opposites that are really not opposites. They're really mutually supporting, um, ideologies. Like you can hate technology and say like, I don't check my phone or answer my iPhone. Cause I'm surfing, man. Like it's rad. And I'm out doing whatever in the pipe and i don't know those words <laughs> you're out of words I don't, know how to, I don't know how to string the words together but clearly um, clearly but i think that you have to have that reliance to really get that you know if you say five years from a guy that's been at this thirty thousand level uh from a training perspective like that's ambitious like, yeah. to get doctrine or programs written funding approved you know places to train because you have to have a home for this. The training. heck to get in front of a budget. Yeah, and then like, to do it internationally. Yeah, like, it's it's a lot. It is a lot. Well, I, you know, I, thanks for scaring me. <laughs> hey, That's I, awesome. I told you I'd get it out go, of her. Go jump in a lake. Yeah. It's not just <laughs> land sharks that scare her. Yeah, exactly. That's no, I mean, I, I would say, sure, it's ambitious. But again, I don't think that we're reinventing the wheel. Here's what I, I would say, though, too, is everybody always – and you've got all of these – you know, I use the wide net analogy that you cast for helping mm -hmm. everybody. And everybody in nonprofits always wants to help everybody. And I tell my guys a lot is, hey, we're helping. We're helping more than most. And I think as a CEO of, uh, you know, ISTO, you need to step back sometimes and say, you know, we're doing a lot. Yeah. We are and doing we, a lot. we're not doing what I – I, I thought this dream organization was going to be, but we are so much better. We are improving every single day. And I think if leaders apply that philosophy or just keep that in check sometimes, I think you re really do realize that you're helping hundreds, mm -hmm. thousands, thousands of people. Thousands and thousands. Yeah. No, I, I do realize that. That's what's so beautiful about this. Remember, every contributor to ISTO is doing their own program. We're just there to support. Can we help you with curriculum? Right. Can we get you some tools? Can we introduce you to some people? I would say the number one across the board conversation that I've had, I mean, the most, I guess the most uh, frequent conversation that I've had is thank you for being here. I've been wanting to talk to somebody about this. I want to start a program. How do I start a program? I, now I call ISTO. So 
we're mentoring and we're helping other programs get started, but we ourselves are not starting these programs. Again, going back to what I had said originally, each one of the programs that get started are starting from an emotional, personal place. We're not saying, hey, everybody, we're missing out on surf therapy for blind people. Somebody go start that program. We're not doing that. Somebody gave birth to somebody who was blind and, and saw that they could go surf and now wants to start that program. So they're coming to us after that. So we're not creating the surf therapy programs out there. People on their own initiative organically, this word's being overused, but organically are cr coming up with their own populations that matter to them. And by the way, when something matters to you, when it's personal, you're going to blood, sweat, and tears aren't going to mean anything. And, but, and that's another thing I want to point out. There's not a program out there. We're all NGOs. We're all nonprofits. We didn't go into this for the money. We're barely making any. We're not, it's not about that. I would do this for free. I would do this for absolutely free. I do this because I can't Can not. you give me your paychecks when you get up? <laughs> sure. Here's your dollar. No, I can't not do it. That's all I know. All I know is I can't not do it. I have to share my stoke. Of I think that's important too. And I will just say this and I, and then we'll kind of wrap up because you got to hit some waves. But when I saw the three to one ratio of volunteers at the, the Manhattan Beach event, I, I said I pulled a lot of those people aside in the small groups. And I said, you know, what? I want to say thanks, because as a veteran myself, you guys are really and I said this to Nancy Miller. I, I said, you know, look around. I said, these people are all putting some skin in the game. And a lot yeah. of listeners have heard me say that because it's kind of a. I, I mean it. You really have to give up an afternoon, get up totally. early, drive from Orange you know, County down to the beach at 06 and have ham at Denny's. But <laughs> you put the work in, man, and you put some skin in the game. And to see, you know, 40 people or, you know, 45 people show up for, you know, 15 vets, that's powerful, man. And they're, they are making an impact. And it's probably... I don't know, like the blind side, you know, where Sandra Bullock's sitting there. And, and Chris is really good at guy movie quotes, um, by the way. Tommy where, Boy. Tommy Boy, yeah. We could we could do a whole episode yeah, on that. Yeah. When like, she says, like, that? you know, you're, this when, when, totally. when the elitist friends are saying, you know, oh, you know, you're changing that boy's life. And she quickly turns around and says, no, he's changing mine. And every one of the volunteers last week 100%. had that same sentiment, you know, not to you know, quote the blind side. Yeah, but. and I'm going to jump up top of my surf bucket here and say this. Like, we, we're always divided on, yeah, Donald Trump this and, and not Donald Trump that. And Elizabeth Warren's an Indian. And no, she's not. And and Sebastian Junger gave us that task and get folks in the middle, rally people in the middle. So set all that stuff aside and let that stuff be what that stuff is and, and get your butt down to a beach and volunteer, get in the water and, and participate in things that are in your immediate area. You know, you can literally go sit in front of someone uh, it'll give an autistic mom a break or a, a parent oh, of an autistic God. kid, give her a break and be like, yeah, let me go take your kid out in this, in this ocean, you know, and whatever. And just, or just playing on the beach. Yeah. Now, you're invest, 100% yeah right. 100%. Invest your time in something that you can have an impact. Like if your grass is great and it's green, you're not worried about anybody else's grass is being greener. Then go help someone else who doesn't have any grass or someone who's like, I just fucking need a break for my kid because I, I know a bunch of parents of autistic kids and it is, it is trying to have a, a break from that is wonderful. So you can be a parent of just a kid, kid, and like need therapy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Everybody, <laughs> I heard everybody. All parents say that. That's you know what? It's, There's like another Chris population. Says, like, everybody yeah. needs therapy. That's what I'm talking about. Like, that's, house, talking about. that's another population. I should be taking out parents who just just had a baby, right? And need a break. My kid's an asshole. I mean, how many <laughs> how many parents say that like about their teenage kid? Like that motherfucker. I just you know what? He can go surf all he wants. I'm gonna sit here and not be near him. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll be safe. He'll, be, he'll be safe. Maybe he'll come out and be less of an asshole for 20 minutes. Either way, like instead of worrying about shit you can't even control, you can absolutely get down here, kick out 50 bucks, kick out an hour or two of your time, and really start to have a real impact. You know, put your put your effort into something that you can really see and have a tactile appreciation. So I, I appreciate it. 100%. You and the vol I tell the volunteers every session, please do not forget. If you're not a surf instructor, because... You know, the surf instructor is working one on one right, sure. with the athlete. If you're not a surf instructor, remember as water safety and as beach volunteer, cheering on our athletes is a massive part of the magic. Please cheer them on. Part of ensuring that our athletes are seen, heard, and valued is saying their names. I say that a lot. Say their names. No, meet somebody today who you've never met before and know their name. So at the end of this, you can talk about 
Jimmy's surf session or Alex's surf session or Sally's. I guess I got to throw in a girl there. Sally's surf session. And, um, but say them by name. Mm-hmm. Don't, you know, we talk about our, our homeless and, and these at risk children who, by the way, have been ripped out of their homes and now they're in the foster care system. Talk about forgotten or feeling forgotten veterans feeling forgotten you come down here everybody knows your name and i'm sorry again hi cheers but everybody knows your name and that's really important and you're cheering people on and they can hear that and and then in the circle people are you know feeding off of each other and yeah so it it, i mean we got to get out of our own way the bottom line is get out of your own way and if by the way if you are in a rut it's because you're only thinking about yourself the only way to do it, it is to go help other people. Get out of your rut. Come down to the beach and get in the groove. Wait, this get is the water. this is just another example too. I always say there's all these boutique five hundred ones. Like maybe deep sea fishing isn't your thing. Maybe equine isn't your thing. Maybe surfing isn't your thing. Maybe it is. But you know this this episode would. And thanks again for doing yeah, this. Yeah, I think you know the next next one uh, we have you back on. You can talk about some of the success stories and how you've moved forward with with ISTA and what's going on. But it's just another great outlet not just for veterans who pete and i have a deep connection to obviously because we are veterans but so many other people when you meet someone outside of these circles that i love to be connected to way outside my circle and say you know what man i met this really smart kook and she runs a surf therapy gig and you should be a part of that i'm I'm not a veteran oh you don't have to be that's a good news you can just show up and leave it at the door and so thanks yeah, for that. yeah. I mean, no it's labels really, yeah it's really it's really cool and I, I always appreciate the fact that there's other avenues that people can go down to help them heal and move past some of the trauma they've experienced whatever it is and I love it that you're totally inclusive not exclusive that is probably one of the most important things in my rule book um, so again, thanks. And if Aww. people want to find you or more about ISSA, where do they go again? International surf therapy.org. What if I just Google it? What do I, international surf therapy or international surf therapy. It'll come up. We're the only people. We're the only international surf therapy organization that exists. It'll come up. Jimmy Miller foundation.org. I'm program manager for it. That'll come up. So, and what's, you know, if you're in Southern California and you are a veteran or an active duty military, come down and come surf with us. Come surf with us. Pete, come surf with us. You got it. I'll do it. Scott, come surf with us.